Bobby K. Wokan, so known as Corvus Cornix, and welcome to Jack, yet another Crowcast where I pick a game I played for a week and then I talk about it. This week's game is Tiny Toons, Babs Pig's Break, on the Game Boy, released in 1992, and it's a platformer, developed by Konami and also published by Konami, and also there will be spoilers up ahead just so you know, but first a little backstory. So this is also a random pickup I did at Retro Gathering this year, and uh, yeah, let's see what I think about it. So the game starts with Babs Bunny jumping through a couple of spotlights and she's daydreaming about becoming an actress and her friends follow her along so she won't get into trouble. So the first chapter is Talent and Luck and the friends that will be helping her out on this stage or the friends of Babs is Dizzy the Devil, like the, the son of the Tasmanian Devil. So you start playing as Buster but you can change who you play as by pressing the start button, going to the menu and you can select between Plucky the Duck and Hampton the Pig. So you start with two lives, that means that your character can take two hits before it's, uh, they lose it a life. And all the characters share the same life bar, it's very important to remember that. And it's that's one of the biggest complaints I have. If the character had like, or the characters had three hearts, it would be a lot easier to play this game. Because some bosses later on are a real pain. So, Buster collects uh, carrots, and these are used as projectiles. So you just, well, you throw carrots at the enemies. You can also jump on them, by the way. Plucky collects corns. I think they are corns because the graphics aren't that detailed, but they might be springs as well because they bounce around all over the screen when you throw them. And then uh, Hampton has these, I think they're barrels or bowling balls that he just, they go across the screen and takes out enemies. And that's about it. You also collect diamonds, um, which is used later in the game for a mini game. Otherwise, I don't think they serve a purpose. Maybe for score? There's also a power-up that will grant the character uh, some invisibility, just like the story Mario. Also, another thing about these power-ups is that they drop from blocks, but it took me a while to figure this out. It's like the Mario blocks, but you do it like in reverse order. You jump on top of them and power-ups will fall down below. And not for long throughout the stage, you will encounter a wall, a literal wall. <laughs> so this is where you need the uh, Dizzy the Devil's help. So you found him down in the underground area. And you go down to the underground area through these, I think they're war pipes or logs. So you get his help and he will clear out the wall. And the boss on this area, if you can call it a boss, is feeding Dizzy food because he's always hungry. So you are on top of a conveyor belt and try to, uh, well... <laughs> make food hit his mouth, I guess, and avoid things on the conveyor belt that will hurt you. So the next stage is the city, so Furball is the companion that will help you throughout the stage. So what you need to do, you need to scale a, a building and avoid the construction workers, and you need to find Furball, and this is where I've got my first game over. Uh, you have two game overs to start with, and uh, it's good that you have those. It's a pretty short game, but as I said, it's nice to have them. So when you find Furball, you need to play a game of hide and seek with him. So he hides in these pipes and you need to find, well, which pipe he is in. So after that, you will get an auto-scroller where he go through pipes and avoid fire and stuff. You go through the pipes to get to the train station because that's where Babs is and you, well, you end up in a train. Where a new enemy is introduced, like, there are these fake blocks that will come to life. So you can choose to stay on top of the train or go down into the carriage below. And this is one of the neater effects or nicer effects. The <laughs> I went through a tunnel and one of the enemies on top of the train got covered in soot because, well, you went through a, a tunnel with the train. So the boss on this stage is a buff bulldog that plays basketball. So you need to jump on his head when he's flexing his big muscles. <laughs> and it's very finicky, you have to be like dead center. And if you get hit by him, he will make you into a basketball and throw you into the hoop and it's kind of an annoying animation because it takes a while for it to play out he bounces you around the court and throw you into the hoop so the next stage is the haunted house so the character that will help the main crew here is fifi the skunk so you go through a forest and avoid bees and beehives and as i said this area is kind of frustrating because you generally just have two hearts you can collect more throughout the game but i only had two at this stage so you end up at a game called uh, Monty Mash, which is basically whack-a-mole. You will <laughs> whack enemies and Montana Max in the head with a mullet to earn points. And this is the only place in the game that I found that you actually need diamonds to, to play a game. So if you don't have enough diamonds, you can't progress. I, don't, I wouldn't call it like a soft block or anything, but I think it's possible to get one here. So after this mini game, you find Fifi and you're supposed to let her out of her cage and she, she uses her skunk abilities to stink up some trees with big noses. <laughs> I don't know, just so out of place, but I laughed at it. 
So the boss of this stage is a ghost in armor and you, you're supposed to jump on his helmet and you avoid his long arm hookshot looking things. So right now Bubs is finally a star and she's supposed to go to the theater to perform but Montana Max, because he's an asshole, uh, let's face it, he buys the theater and he's about to close it down. So this stage you will get the help of the Calamity Coyote which is the, uh, the son or the grandson of the, well the coyote from Roadrunner. So the stage that follows is Buster riding a bike strapped to a rocket, collecting diamonds while avoiding Elvira's hugs. And at the end of the stage, Elvira falls down into a pit. <laughs> I don't know, it's just so in tied with the series that I couldn't help but laugh at this as well. So apparently Babs was captured by Montana Max's bodyguards. You take him out and you get Sherpy, I think she was called, this bird, to fly you to the right and final destination where you confront Max. So it's a side scroller where you basically duck down in holes to avoid him in his monster truck. And I think he had a monster truck in the series, but I'm not quite sure. It was a long time since I watched Tiny Toon. And the final battle with him is, uh, I think you pay him like 500 diamonds as well, just so you can buy the theater bat, but he's not nice. So you, of course you have to battle him the, like a final time where he's in this like pogo stick thing. Uh, and you avoid him until he gets dizzy and you jump on his head. Also very finicky with the jumping on the head thing. And then Babs actually wants to conquer the cosmos with her acting. I'm not sure how that will work, but there are actually aliens in a Tiny Toon uh, universe as well, like Marvin the Martian, I believe. But yeah, that's more or less the end of the game. So gameplay. Help Babs' daydreams become reality and help her stay out of trouble. Control. The D-pad moves the characters around, and if you push start you can select between Plucky the Duck, Buster and Hampton the Pig. The A button jump and the B button uses the, the weapons that the characters have like the carrots, the uh, the corn spring things and the uh, bo boiling ball bowling balls? Yeah. Graphics. The graphics are charming and the character portraits are very well, well they're very detailed and it's kind of impressive what they did with the monochromatic screen of the Game Boy. It only has like a grayscale but they pulled it off somehow. Sound and music. Hidehiro Funushi made the music for this game, and it's happy and chirpy, and it even has the theme from the cartoons, and uh, it's not that repetitive, and it's, well, it's overall a good soundtrack. Easter egg secrets and glitches. So I watched a tool-assisted speedrun, also called a TAS, on YouTube. The game was beaten in 19 minutes and 38 seconds, so this game is very short, and it was beaten by X2 Poet. So I like the idea. I also like, I've talked about it a bunch on this podcast, but I like speedruns. It's kind of impressive. But the difference between a human speedrun and a tool assisted one is that a, I guess the program learns how to play the game. And some of the button inputs are impossible by the human hand, but it, nonetheless, it's cool to watch. So in conclusion, I wrote, yes, play it. It's a nice looking game. I like the look, I like the feel, I like the sound, and it's very well polished overall. And I'm very glad I made a purchase. As I said previously, it was a random purchase. I didn't know anything about the game. I just watched the animated series as a kid, so I was pleasantly surprised. The only complaint I have about the game is that it's very short. And I would have liked to have been able to take a couple of extra hits instead of two. Otherwise, it's a, it's a good game. I'm very happy that I picked it up, and I'm happy to have it in my collection. So anyway, thanks for listening and for watching, and take care.